How are you, Defcon? Okay. So, you know, you're looking. This is our presentation. We are speaking about car hacking and later about how to do a forensic job uh, into a car after a crash, after an accident, to retrieve all the speed, the RPM, the brake position, and these kind of things. Okay? So, let's just start. You know, the, the talk is called Dude, What the Fuck in My Car? I'm, uh, I'm Alberto. He's Javier, Javi. Okay, I'm gonna introduce him before of that, before of all. Um, he's a hardware specialist. Okay, he loves breaking toys. Uh, every every time I met with I meet with him, he's always with uh, some wire and some stuff, just with the hands very dark, completely dirty, you know, but dirty in the sense of the hand only. Okay, so he's freelance. Okay, he's working. He's alone, and he's from Cadiz. We are from Spain, okay? This is important to understand the jokes and these kind of things. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sometimes we are different kind of jokes, but I think the Spanish jokes are cool. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you have been on Spain, if you have ever been on Spain, but uh, he's from Cadiz. Cadiz is a city that is in the very south of Spain, just near from Morocco, Marruecos, whatever. And... Um, um, that's him, okay? And uh, I'm this guy on the left, the youngest one. The other guy is my is my grandpa, and uh, yeah, I'm. This is my second my second time here in DevCon, okay? Last year I was speaking here about uh, other stuff. The thing is, <laughs> thank you. The thing is, um, I don't want to introduce myself like the typical, like typical times, like oh, I'm doing the shit or whatever, blah blah blah. So the thing is that I'm going to use a video of the last year. Yeah, that's a piece of the of the talk of, the la of last year in, here in, in DevCon. So I think it will be enough to introduce myself. You see, I just very I'm very lazy. I just reuse the slides. And I'm from Valladolid. Valladolid is a city 200 kilometers on the north of Madrid. And uh, I'm 24 years old. I'm single. If anyone wants to, okay. Uh, no, I'm only like girls. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, the thing is that I'm 25 years old right now, but all the same. All the rest is the same, okay? So, only girls, please. Okay, let's go. Okay, like I told you at the beginning, we are speaking about uh, hacking the car, hacking the ECU. The ECU is like the brain of the, of the car. There are different brains around the car, but we are uh, trying to get the control to interact with these ECUs that are the main one, are the ECUs where the, where the configuration of the car are st is stored, okay? So this is the first part. This is going to be the first part of the, of the talk. And then, uh, like I told you, we are going to do the forensic job, okay? So we can know what happened in an accident and uh, if someone is guilty or not or whatever. Um, yeah, so... For now, I'm going to give the micro to my friend, my partner, and he's going to start. Okay, so as Alberto said, I'm Javier, I'm from Cadiz, and all the stuff, and I'm not going to talk again. So, why did this happen, the car hacking thing? Well, I had a friend, uh, well, I did, used to do this chip tuning stuff with my laptop, like everyone does. And he kept on bugging me, you know, like, now I want it factory, and I want it cheap. So I said, man, I fucking make one piece of hour, so you keep, you know, you stop bugging me. So that's how it all started. You know, I just wanted to him not to keep on calling me. So, well, at first, of course, I used Google, you know. I, I tried the easy way, but it, it didn't work quite much. So I needed a plan, so... I had to sort it out. 
At first, I needed some information, of course. Uh, I needed to see how our car did work. So I realized that there were different electronic control units, that they were all networked in the, in the same bus. So they, uh, they were addressable, they had some security. I didn't really know that much. I will explain in a while. And I knew that data was storing them. That's a so-called chip tuning, for example, but there's other interesting data as well. Uh, there are some communication protocols. Uh, here we have the most uh, widely spread. These are not the only ones, but they are the most common, especially Canvas. It's the most recent one, and it's the one that's been here. So here are the differences. And, well, Well, yeah, the, one of the most important things is when I started with this thing was the price. You know, when I was going to develop the tool, it was from my friend. I wanted it cheap, so K-Line was like $10 cheaper. I am that cheap. I just went for the $10 interface, K-Line. Why did I choose it? Well, uh, as I said, it is cheaper. Uh, it is just one I see for Canvas. We need two ICs. And, you know, uh, ECUs that work with K-Line are older, therefore more cheap. It's all about money, after all, you know. The difference is that $8, but... Yeah, it's not a match. You know, it's like, uh, ten, uh, yeah, it's like $10, $8, but yeah. that's something. Then, uh, the question, if it's different, is it easy to implement it? Well, actually, the difference between K-Line and Canvas is just a uh, protocol layer. So it's layer one and layer two. Uh, all the encryption, all the communication is the same. So if we wanted to move from K-Line to Canvas, it would take no time. It would be quite easy just changing the hardware and changing how the packets are structured. Canvas works on SPI, but not really a big deal. So now, at first, what did we know about the ECUs before? We knew that they were expensive. And usually that they are inside cars, you know, I haven't yet seen one like walking down there or spotting the wild, you know, as I say here. Yeah. So then uh, once I decided to start with it, I had two options. One was uh, to re do some research and navigate through uh, technical information or we could just hook the logic analyzer. But we decided to go 50-50, you know, just not to make it too boring or too interesting either way. So that's what we found after a little bit of research. They are responsible for the engine management, uh, engine ECUs, not all ECUs. We have ABS ECUs, uh, we have uh, even LOX ECUs, which are called Comfort. We had many others, but this is just engine ones. The, these ones store engine faults, of course. They hold immobilizer routines as well. And they contain firmware that determines the way the car behaves. So the target hardware, which is the ECU itself, the physical thing, is composed of internal and external flash. Internal flash is uh, most of the times OTP, it's not accessible uh, normally uh, from the outside. Uh, it has internal EPROM, external EPROM most of the times as well. And I really know in black rubber, uh, you know, it's like something when you try to open it, it's stuck. You need to hit it. It sucks. Uh, you have to deal with it anyway. So, so as we, as I said, we attach the logic analyzer. And we saw this stuff. This is exactly from an EDC 15, which is like the first generation to say somehow. There are all the generations, but this one is the first one of the ones we will be talking about. We can see some parts. The first part is like the wake up pattern. It's just uh, the address for the control module, which is 01, sent at five bouts. That's it. Then uh, we negotiate the speed. Uh, which is just to request uh, the speeds that are supported by the device. Then we change the speed to higher ones because you start at 10,400 uh, bouts. 
uh, you do the authentication, you set the address you want to read, or, well, actually you write at first on EDC 15, you have to send a loader. On 16, you don't have to do that, but I'll talk about that later as well. And uh, the fourth uh, part we can see here is just uh, sending the loader plus operations. So, of course, I was ignorant about that. I just said, man, this is easy, you know, I just replay it. Uh, it didn't work, it wasn't that easy. So after some dumps, after some research, what did I found? Well, actually, uh, we just noticed that there was an authentication that was not static. That's why the replay attack uh, didn't, act, uh, didn't work. So it's called a seed key algorithm. What is it? It's just a challenge. You know, the ECU acts as a server. So you just request authorization. The ECU will send you a seed. You will have to do some stupid maths. You will send the result. That's called the key. And there you go. That's it. It has checksum, of course, to check the integrity of the data that you are uploading. When you want to mod it, if you download it, it already has a checksum in, so you don't need to really check anything. And on EDC 6, uh, 15, it requires a loader, as I was saying. Yes, to add, uh, for the operations, it's usually in assembler, and it lets you access the apron, access the flash, you know, internal flash. Uh, on EDC 16, we have this seed key algorithm as well, but it's not like uh, on EDC 15. There it is just one level because you just write, uh, send a loader, and then you do the operations with that loader. Here we have uh, level three to read, which is a pretty easy uh, seed key challenge. It's just an add to a number. Uh, we have level two, which is for apron operations, and we have level one, which is to write the flash of the device which is a little bit more complex, but it's quite um, like EDC 15. They didn't change it at all, you know, just small things. We have RSA encryption. You, when you want to download from EDC 16, it's plain. You know, it's just a binary. You can put it into IDA or your favorite tool. No problem. It's easy. But when you want to upload it, of course, you need to have the checksums like you did earlier, but it needs to be... Uh, RSA encrypted into two blocks of 256 kilobytes in this case. Well, actually, whatever you want to upload, it must be always uh, encrypted in blocks of 256 kilobytes. Well, how did we do it? Uh, my wife helped me uh, just a little bit. You know. She's a nice guy. Now, what, why is this interesting? Well, you know, uh, I think we all want to save a few bucks. So if you mod your car to have more uh, millage per gallon, that's good. As well, uh, well, the difference between most of cars, you know, like, for example, my own car is a Seat Ibiza. I have the Cupra one, which is 167 horsepower. I just uh, modded it. Now it's 210 horsepower. That's easy. It's free. You know, that's good. Um, of course, it's cool to tweak with a car, you know. It's like, man, it's so fucking huge, so expensive. I'm just hacking it. That's cool. So it's just 26 bucks to do that. So what does the ECU tool code look like? Well, at first, I started with EDC 15, which was the ECU in my car and in my friend's car. So. I developed uh, the whole thing. It was 1,800 lines of code for Arduino, which is C. Uh, then I wanted to start reversing it for EDC 16 as well, so I just had to start from scratch as well. So I go to different uh, binaries, one for EDC 16, which is almost the same lines, even though procedures are different. Uh, well, as well, the first point, uh, I am using an at mega uh, 328p and Arduino Uno to say. So I had to be really careful while uh, coding it uh, due to the limitations of the MCU itself. And 
Uh, we are actually working now uh, on externalizing, for example, I, I coded these loaders uh, in the firmware, but we thought that it would be better to externalize it into binary so we could read them out, and by making it uh, with modules, you know, the procedures, we, um, we can make uh, an universal uh, uh, firmware, so we don't need to be updating it every time we want to add support for new ECUs, and that's what we are working on now. Uh, this is how a Bosch EDC15 board looks like. Uh, as I said, it has an EPROM. In this case, it's external. It has the MCU, and it has the external flash. This is a little bit of the uh, code from the EDC15 authentication, the seed key. Uh, the uh, algorithm is static, but then, uh, for example, here uh, I have uh, an EDC 15P. This one, this has uh, one uh, set of keys to say, even though the algorithm is the same for all the EDC 15 family. Uh, if we get an EDC 15V, uh, then the keys change, and the VM uh, keys are different, so we would need to extract the keys for every single uh, ECU but that's not a hard task. It can be done with brute forcing and some power tricks to say. Because it stores the uh, times you have done a wrong login, but you can glitch it just to forget about it all, just as it got good rank, you know, it's the same. Now, this is the board for a Bosch EDC 16. In this case, the EPROM is internal, but when there are variants which have an external EPROM. There's the MCU, the internal flash, we stores the seed key algorithm, interesting. We have the external flash, and we have a JTAG port, which is called the BDM, Bench Diagnostics mode, but it's just a JTAG. Here we have part of the code for the level one authentication for EDC 16 as well. Uh, well, mm, just like it happens on EDC 15, uh, for example, we have an EDC CP 34. Uh, it's a different model, it's a still EDC 16. The algorithm will be the same, the key will be different. Still, the brute force method that works on EDC 15 works on EDC 16. So we can do it exactly the same way to dump the keys from it. This is the level three authentication. That's, as I said, it's just a nod. Uh, you know, the ECU sends you a, a challenge. You just add, I don't remember what number is it. Uh, 2FC9X, you just add whatever is sent that number and you got it. That's how much they brainstorm, you know, for this. And here we can see an example of RSA encryption in ETC16. On the first part, the top is the binary. Uh, so I just pointed out this uh, red square so we can see the data we are working on this one. Part two, you can see a readout. The data is the same. So you can just retrieve the data, a plane. It has no encryption, it has nothing. Then part three is the write-out. When you're writing, this data down here, even though it's completely different, it's the same. It's just encrypted. So that's how it looks. You know, it looks different. How did we handle it? RSA encryption in the tool. Well, ASM instructions, you know, uh, we're that lazy. We didn't really want to. You will see it. It takes approximately 10 seconds to encode uh, 512 kilobytes, which is the map for chip tuning. That's the size. And we do it uh, before the ECU init because it takes 10 seconds and that will suppose a timeout in the communication with the ECU if we first check if it's there and we cannot afford to lose communication due to the speed. 
And of course, the checksum uh, is calculated at the same time. Since we are reading the source file, we are, uh, the checksum is uh, calculated for the non-encrypted file, not for the encrypted one. So we do both things at the same time, encryption and checksum. This is a small part. It was like four, uh, uh, four pages, so I just show in the first one for the uh, EDC 16 encryption algorithm. So we can see that's the kind of operations. Yeah, uh, like, like he told you, his wife uh, helped him to do that. So that's the, you know, you know his wife. He's a bitch. He's with everyone. Sorry. <laughs> So this is just assembler, you know. <laughs> well, this is not a new concept, chip tuning. You know, you can get tools for that. It's not like these are the prices. I consider that expensive. I don't know about you. So this is what our tool costs. It's a little bit cheaper. <laughs> Thanks. And this is how it looks. It's really fancy. It has mustaches on it. Yeah. So, and it's portable. You know, you don't need a laptop at all. And you can just yes, throw it. It doesn't work, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you know, this is. I will be releasing the code soon, uh, the schematics, so this is open source. You can do whatever you want on it. So you're paying 26 bucks for a device that you will be able to tweak. So I think it's worth than paying like $5,000 for a closed tool. These are the features for our tool. It is not locked to a single vehicle. There are some other uh, standalone tools there. That require no computer, but you are paying like one thousand dollars to be able to use it on your own car. I don't believe in that. It doesn't store encrypted files. I don't want you to need to use my tool. You can use whatever you want. You know, just download it with my tool or download it with any other tool. It does not use the master slave role, which is pretty much the encrypting files thing. And as I said, open source, so you can just add support for whatever you want. Any other models, diagnostics, there will be some cool stuff coming. This is the lower interface side. We can see the Arduino Mini Pro that is used in the left middle. On the bottom is the level shifter. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, this is just a voltage uh, regulator, uh, 7805, to get the 5 volts out of the 12. And this is an SD card reader. The top, you know, it's just an LCD I2C and the buttons. It's, I, can, I think you can see it's homemade. And this is a very cute Eagle interface board. Uh, it's just the same hardware. This part is an uh, RG45 connector, so you can get the thought of how tiny it is. And it has FTDI already embedded in, so you can update it or whatever, you know, straight off. The thing is, uh, that is homemade, okay? The thing that you saw before, this is homemade. If you want to do it better with this board, it's it's much smaller than this, okay? This is just a case to hold all the, all the things that he told you, okay? But this thing is maybe just, maybe, like a hand? Uh, for a, a quarter size of this. Yeah, so it's smaller, and the thing of the smaller side is interesting because we are speaking later about what evil things we can do with this thing, okay? So that's not smart, okay. We're so evil. So here's an example how to make it wireless. This is just the same thing. What we did is uh, the serial console. We just uh, ported it to, you know, we added Bluetooth. It's just one dollar, and we can control it with our Android phone. So it's wireless, and it's cheap. 
Now, some samples of use for it, like I was saying, we can mod it to have uh, less, uh, more millage per gallon. How to bypass Immo? Immobilizer on EDC 15. It's just a patch in the apron. It's just two bytes. You know, you just uh, do the inverse for them, and you have no Immo. You, uh, you, the loader is embedded for uh, reading and writing the apron, so it's just you know quite easy in the menus. You just click on a button and it's done. And of course, you can later enable it. Well, disabling a car is fun. You connect the tool. You start to write to it, and when it's in the middle of the writing process, you pull the cable. <laughs> so it's fucked up. No checksum, no anything. You know, you've got an expensive piece of metal. But later on, you can still recover it. Not everything is lost. Uh, there are recovery procedures for it. Uh, by the diagnostic port, you don't need to pull the echo of the car, and it will eventually work again. Yeah, but it's funny for a joke. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, you know, to find out uh, to a friend when he finds out that his car is not working. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a sample of 3 use. Uh, well, you know, we can add any interface 3G, we can add Wi Fi, we can add Bluetooth as we saw with the phone. And, well, uh, we can disable a car. We could eventually, it is not yet implemented that is completely different. We could control a car with this device as well, with other firmware. We could disable or start modules, functions like turn on the air conditioner and make whoever get a really bad cold, you know. He wouldn't be able to disable, it would be terrible. But. And now uh, we're going to do a demo on the EDC uh, 16. It will be console, but we will be able to see the process. And, well, I'm going to show, uh, but because you cannot see it from there, but I'm going to explain what we have here. We have an EDC 16 ECU here connected. We have an Arduino uh, Mega uh, 2560. And we have a normal uh, 10 bucks diagnostics cable. So what did they do here? I just uh, wired up the level shifter from the diagnostics uh, to the Arduino, and then uh, this level shifter to the ECU. So we are going to be sending uh, commands from the Arduino to read the information, to read the flash, and to write the, well, we are actually going to kill the ECU, and we are going to revive it again, and we are going to read the info after that. And so let's get to it. Yeah. So let's see if it works. We're going to read the info first. We can see that's fast. It doesn't take too much time. Here we have the information, the software version, the engine. This is for a Volkswagen Passat. Being we, it is not connected to a chassis, but as I said, as I said information is all around the K-line bus. So we could get the chassis number, the bin number, and this is the software date. So now we're going to read the external flash. It would take a while. So uh, meanwhile, what can I say about this? It's just so fancy. I like flashing here, you know. It's a pity you cannot see it flashing. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, when I was reversing the protocol, I noticed that uh, there were huge time gaps. Uh, you know, this is based on packets. So uh, between each, each packet is form of bytes, of course. Between each byte, there was a huge uh, time. I don't know how to explain it. A, a delay, you know, that 
After some testing, I realized that it wasn't necessary, so I sped it up. Uh, we changed the protocol, we made it faster, it works like approximately 25% faster uh, than original tools on ADC16 and it works like uh, 400 times uh, percent more faster on ADC15. So they didn't really brainstorm too much about that anyway. I will not show the dump at this time because we are running low on time. So now we are going to kill the ECU. Now it's processing the RSA. You have to believe that, okay? But we are going to show the logical analyzer after that. To show the, okay? A capture of the logical analyzer. Yeah, we will show now the logic analyzer capture so you can see what's going on. So we got to be faster now. So what we are going to do to kill, since we have no cable to plug, we're just going to start writing, we're going to send uh, just uh, one packet of data, then we are going to stop communicating with the ECU. So now it's deactivated. I need to power cycle it one second. Okay. So now we are going to try to read the information. Of course, since it's disabled, it won't be replying. So we got no response. It's disabled. It's just a piece of junk right now. But now we are going to make it work again. Yeah, it should be fast. Yes, this RSA thing is so slow. Uh, you know it's an 8-bit processor <laughs> with two kilobytes of RAM. <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. yeah, now, actually to revive it, since uh, we screwed up the flash, you know, we were starting to write, we erased the whole flash, it was blank, we started to write, so, checksums were incorrect. Now to fix it, we need to write the whole flash again. We are writing what we read out the first time. So, um, now uh, as I said, uh, RSA encryption here is divided in blocks of 256 kilobytes. The full flash is 512 kilobytes, so we will be writing two blocks. This is the first block. Now we're starting with the second block. Yeah. Uh, since we are running out of time, we will go now on with the four things. If there's enough time, we will show the logic analyzer. It will be fast. Just showing out the, or maybe while it's writing, we can just show, okay. I'll show the, this is the seed key, okay? We will, these packets, this is so small. 82 is the address, the target address, 10 is the source address, F1 is a request. Now, 27 means we want to have security access. We are sending this packet. Now, this is the level, level 01, which is to write. So the ECU will reply with the uh, uh, 6701 means okay, I will send you the challenge. So here we have, uh, for example, 86, 58, 86C. That will be the seed for the challenge. Now we would process this and we should send, okay, 27. O2, we must add one to the security level we requested, and you know, and these are just four bytes, these ones here. And then if we succeed, it will reply with a 67. If we fail, it will reply 7F, which means denied. And when writing, we can see this is a huge block here, 
then we stop we delete the second block, we write the second block, and then we are done. That's the writing process. So, one second, I need to power cycle it. And now, we are going to read the info again to see it works. So, again, it's alive after killing it. It reads the info. Okay. So now <laughs> it worked, <laughs> and Shit, wait. What? no, it's not connected. I, I just passed the slide, but it wasn't. It's not connected, so you didn't see the the joke. <laughs> Windows. Ah, uh, it was a joke. Okay, yeah. The Spanish, you know. Anyway. So, I have only like uh, 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go fast. Um, yeah, what happened in an accident? Uh, that the police usually do is just to, you know, uh, look the um, the marks in the in the in the floor when the accident happens, and uh, looks the deformation of the car and this kind of things to know what's the what was the speed and the things that happen. But the IT guys, we have a really cooler uh, way to get all the data and to know all the exactly parameters of the accident. So. Um, Let's go to see what happened. In all the cars, in our cars, we have like a black box, just the same like in a, in a plane. The only difference is that uh, it doesn't uh, record the, the, the sound. So don't worry if you speak uh, dirty things or whatever. So it is not stores, okay? So it stores uh, information before and after the crash. It is very interesting because even after the crash, there is a memory that stored information. So we could know, we could have more information about the accident itself. So that information, like I told you at the beginning, is related with the speed. This is the most, this is the most important. The RPM, brake use, ABS activity, and it depends on the on the um, on the brand, okay, on the brand of the that that have made the the ECU. But there are a lot of information that is stored in the in the ECU. Usually, the this information is stored in the airbag ECU, okay, most of the times. So we have to take this uh, part of the car. The ECU is similar. It's just a kind. It's a little bit smaller than the ECU. This ECU, okay? And the info is stored in the EEPROM memory. The EEPROM is non, not uh, non-volatile or volatile, yeah. And uh, so we can access to the data after the crash. Okay, it's not. It's great for that. Uh, there is costly hardware and software that is outside, and you can use it. But the thing is, this talk is about how to make a thing that costs uh, only 25 bucks instead of a uh, thousand of dollars. And uh, in that case, uh, even the the tools used to get information are more expensive than to modify the ECUs. So the cool thing is that we did uh, something to the poor people. So. Yeah, there's a, we are speaking all the time about five minutes, okay. We are speaking all the time about the boss, uh, the boss ECUs, ECUs, okay. So there are three different ways to extract information from an ECU after a crash. In that case, from the airbag uh, ECU. The first of all is uh, connecting to the ODB. There is an option to connect to the ODB. The ODB is the port that is behind the wheel in the car and we can just access to the information. Not in all the time because you know in some crashes the car is completely fucked. So, uh, what? So, um, so there is the connection is lost, so we can retrieve the information. Okay. So the other most common way is just to connect directly to the um, to the ACU, okay, and get the information. But for that we need an authentication. Okay. We need a kind of authentication. Maybe it's not a strong authentication, but anyway, it's an authentication. And finally, we have the fancy way, the cool way. I think it's real directly the EEPROM memory. Okay, we, I've said that all the information is just in the EEPROM, so we can read it. 
Okay? Yes, it's more uh, hardware stuff than software star software stuff. I'm I'm a software guy. Okay, for me maybe it's more difficult, but for this kind of people of hardware it's like uh, eating a cream, an ice cream. Okay, this is the first one. This is the ODB port behind the wheel. So this is the first way. This is the other way that is connecting directly to the airbag DCU to get information. And the last one is this is an EEPROM memory. This is the size of the EEPROM. You see it in the finger. So it's very small, but we can do it. We can do it. So this is the, the hardware I told you before. Hardware and software. Okay, the hardware is. Um, it's like no hardware because it doesn't do almost anything. But uh, anyway, and the software that is the real important part of this uh, of this uh, kit. The premium tool hardware kit costs uh, almost nine thousand dollars. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm not going to pay for that. So, what about the poor guys? What about people like me that have just? Uh, uh, ended the school and university and this kind of things and we don't have money. Um, the software that is for me I think is the important part is you can access to him free, for free, okay? It's free software. So the code about parsing the data that is the most important because we can retrieve the information of the EEPROM but we have to parse this information to know okay from the byte 11 until the byte 40 is the speed and from the byte whatever until the byte whatever is uh, whatever. Okay? So we have to parse it. So yeah we can, I know, you know his wife is very known and I sleep with his, with his wife once too. <laughs> Sorry man. <laughs> okay, and that's the thing. In this tool, this, these are the, um, the models of the vehicles that are supported. Okay, so there are a large list of uh, vehicles, the brands of vehicles that, that are supported to, to do this. But did you miss something? Mercedes? Mercedes? Yeah, it's not in the list. So, what happened? Once upon a time, a client contacted us to do a forensic job into a car. And the car was a Mercedes. So we said, one, maybe two. Okay, one. <laughs> okay, so we said, well, what, what, are, what are we going to do? So what we do? What, first of all, we read the EEPROM, okay? Just um, soldering, is soldering? Yes, soldering, it's a leg of the EEPROM memory to extract the information. Yep. And then we retrieve all the information on the EEPROM, but we said, okay, we have the info, but we don't know how to parse this info. We don't know what parts of the, of the binary, because it's an app, a binary. We don't know what parts of the binary are real, the speed, the RPM, or whatever. So what we did is just to erase one copy of this uh, binary and make a bin diff. Okay? So we knew what exactly parts were modified after the crash. So at least it's a good point of start. Okay, so the next step was uh, already filtered the the information. We only have the information. We only have the parts of the ECU. Okay, I'm going. It's one minute, a half. I think it's uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we use Win OLS. That is a it's a software to print the the graphics to print the cartography on we uh, difference between the graphic that are uh, um, how is it in English crescent and the crescent. Okay, so what do you think it, uh, the speed will be in a cross? The crescent, right? If you cross, you stop. Do yeah, the, the 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 speed is the crescent. So we found this. Okay. You can see after looking a lot, we found this this uh, this graphic that matches in our uh, in our um, gathering information in our research. So we had the um, we had the uh, yeah. Anyway, so you know we are running out of time. Uh, we want to say thank you to you. <laughs> like always. Uh, to our family, to our friends, and all those who want to understand how and why things work. Thank you very much.